Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being patient during that break. We've got our second best of three of the day ready to rock and roll. NIP versus the Vegas Squadron. Our last set of quarterfinals. Loser eliminated. Winner moves on to the semis to face Virtus Pro Classic. I'm Zayori, joined again by Coddle Guy. Dakota, how you feeling coming into our second series? Hit that push to talk key now. That's right. You're right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. I'm sitting here. I'm like preaching out again and that freaking button. I, I, I wish you I didn't well, do man. it, but... Apparently, when I do just like free speech or whatever it would be called, it's it sounds like crap with mumble. Apparently, so when I was oh, doing okay. this with LD in the past, it felt like the best way was to do push to talk with this. But it is what it is. We have our limitations. We'll just deal with it for now. Anyways, to answer your question, I'm feeling fantastic. This is a day of Dota. We had a long, exhausting series before this one with Meepone going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Virtus Pro. Now we got this exciting matchup, Ninjas in Pajamas taking on Vega, but there's also matches being had over uh, in the Join Dota MLG, I believe, as well as Dota Pit. And, I mean, it's a doozy. I'm excited, man. We got lots. I have lots of VODs to catch up on. Oh, yeah, certainly so. Now, looking into this game here, NIP, they strike first. Wisp, the first pick, Vegas Squadron. They spent a lot of time on that second band trying to figure out what they want to take out of the pool, prevent ninjas in pajamas from getting their snaky little hands on. They decide to ban the Bat Rider, but now they get something in their comfort zone with that relocate. Vegas Squadron strike back with an axe, ancient apparition, a little bit of the red and blue. Show me the Tony. There should be no reason they don't get it here. Era we saw last time, he plays a great Tony a la carte. Without the Wisp, mm -hmm. with the Wisp, it's just that much more devastating. This could be a repeat, a bit of deja vu from what we saw earlier in the series when they allowed Virtus Pro to get the Wisp, and you just can't sleep on something like that. Then next thing you know, you're dealing with this monster, the raid boss, the big one, the Tony Tuto. I don't know what you want to call him, but it's just it's ridiculous. I, I'm just curious if they're going to allow Vega to actually go through another banning phase. No, they're not. Just what, They're just delaying the inevitable there. Just get the Tony. Well, there it is. You were right. The seeing Era play Tiny without Wisp, uh, I, I completely agree with you. There's no reason not to play it when you have a Wisp, if you can win without it. And just a hard combo to deal with. Picking it up this early, revealing your hand, it doesn't really reveal all that much. Witch Doctor is a support that comes to mind. Really good against the Wisp, plus his Tether Buddy as that coconut bounces all around. We'll see what Vega Squadron pick up. Which Dr. AA could be a pretty good support duo, pending what NIP ban out here. They start off with a sniper, and Vega strike back with a centaur ban. Just want to say I like your shirt. I, mean, I get to see Thanks. it right now. That's oh. a nice little shirt you got there. This is. I, I think Leonard Nimoy died. Is that true? Is he dead? Oh, I don't know. I know he I was sick. Not. He's dead. He lived long and he prospered. I'm sorry. So sorry about is, your loss. The, there's three pages on the front page of uh, <laughs> subreddit of just regular Reddit right now. Ten thousand upvotes. Oh my god, that's the most net upvotes I've ever seen on a post, I think. That's nuts. Five seconds, anyway. That's unfortunate. It is sad. <laughs> yeah, what a sad turn this cast has taken, Dakota. Yeah. Wait, well, there's Dota, after all, that cheer us on up. Well, we're well, going with the bands. You can see that Ninjas removed the Zeus. Maybe, you know, just don't want to be dealing with the heavy burst, uh, the focus fire that could be there, the global presence overall. They are a uh, dire side. They're probably considering doing some early Roches, and Zeus can kind of rain on that parade. On the other side, Vega... They get rid of Slardar here. I know it's a hero that NIP have gone for, but that's like when they do that funky minus armor lineup that you can even see at the start of the draft. I don't know how I feel about that kind of a ban. I don't think they were kind of going down that road, but we'll have to see where they decide to take it from here. Next pick, though, is going to be Vega Squadron. They only have one support in the prized axe. They're going to round out their secondary support, I imagine, and they're going to get the Earthshaker. Yeah, Earthshaker, and there we go. The NIP Classic striking back with the Venomancer. No Ape Mother, but they're still going to run the Poisonous Veno, most likely as a core, probably in the safe lane, though could also be your off laner here. Jonas tends to play the more mobile heroes, um, unless they're going to safe lane the Tiny Wisp. You never know. They could uh, pull an audible on that front. Earthshaker, though, pretty good against Tiny Wisp. Does give you some long way range way to kind of play with the Tiny, keep him from bashing you with the tree. Eh, sometimes you can lock him in place as well. Good support pick here. It is a good support pick. And it could be also a micro deny of a pick. We know how good and potent the Venomancer AA could be when they're on a team together. So I don't know. But we've seen all through Star Ladder how effective like Eight Mother was on the Venomancer. They don't have Eight Mother anymore. They had brought in uh, Limp, another very, very solid 
Uh, for a while there, there's a lot of standing on NA teams uh, and played a lot in the off lane. I know he plays a very sexy clockwork, but he'd been repping the mid lane game here and might be the one repping this mid lane Venomancer. Uh, that is, of course, unless they don't. I, I think NIP don't do the, seconds, the mid lane Tony Wisp. I think they're one of the teams that do it safe lane. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, um, I, I think so as well. I know in the past, like in the Fnatic days, uh, somewhat frequently at least, they would run Wisp plus one with Era in the safe lane. So let that Wisp mm -hmm. work the jungle and then uh, have him kind of turbo farm that way. Focus less on shutting down the opposition and securing absolute uh, maximum farm for uh, Era on their hard carry. So I, I, I wish they would bring back like the CK, man. Era's CK was so freaking good back in the day, but they tried to give him a couple of buffs. And it's nice, but he's still just too much of like an RNG-based kind of hero. He can't really farm well. You know, his his farm is clock him, you know, with the right <laughs> click. You're not going to use your stun to farm creeps. You're not going to be using your rift to, to kill creeps. You're definitely not using your ultimate to just put it out there. So he just doesn't farm that well. As compared to you look at someone like, like fucking Tiny over here, he's cleaving his way through farm like it's just nothing. Like they're melted butter it's just ridiculous so mm -hmm. anyways moving on just sad that i don't get to see that precious ck anymore um queen of pain is going to be the fourth pickup here for vega uh definitely another hero who received a lot of positive buff treatment and ever since then has really been a go-to as like a second grab in this recent meta and for mm -hmm. a while there's i already felt like we were just screaming out where are the old and golden days of mid laners <laughs> where they could snowball and be flashy and style on some people i'm yeah. happy to see someone like queen of pain back yeah myself included in that group i, I like co-op quite a bit she's fun she's feisty and uh, has the opportunity for big plays now the ultimate cuts through bkb gives her a little bit of additional utility but just kind of like Storm Spirit needs that early momentum. Oftentimes, loves to rush an Orchid if she can get away with it. Uh, we'll we'll see what they have in store for the Quap this go around. NIP think about it quite a bit, and here they opt to pick up the Rubik. Mm, well, I was gonna say a block pick. I know they like uh, having Rubik against Venomancer, but they already have their cores. I guess they could do a core shaker, but that seems a little a little silly. So they pick up their second support. Not a huge amount of stuff to steal this game, but Fissure, quite good. Everything Quap has, pretty good as well. Enough for the Rubik to get by, I think. Yeah, this definitely solidifies the spot as the mid lane Venomancer or core position Venomancer with getting a Rubik grab right here. Nice little greenish trend they have between the two of them. It's pretty swell, but we're getting into the back end of this draft now. A lot of team fight, some good snowball in mid game here for Vega. Um, having a Queen of Pain, having an Axe, these are two who shine the most in that mid game period. You know, you get your Blink Dagger on your Axe, the game quickly changes around if you were if you were struggling a little bit at the start in your early laning phase he's the one to kind of be the quarterback to kind of bring the game back in in, in round number you know three but that means they can create the space for this fifth pick here and they can go pretty heavy on the late game here you know like your naga medusa uh you know one of those kind of categorized heroes or just go faceless void and not do that at all and be more on the team <laughs> fight and you know that's fine too we can go back a couple of months to when ancient apparition and faceless void were a thing and make it work i mean you know what though the nice thing is it's just really really good to have against tiny and wisp i mean he's easily gonna be able to lock both of them down that sets up for an easy ice blast wisp pretty much is a non-factor at that point mm -hmm. yeah uh, ancient apparition in general is very good against wisp plus one stop that overcharge healing and just make that usually tanky target have that lower hp threshold force out those shatters Control is a great way to deal with the Wisp. And now you've got Faceless Void, you've got the Earth Shaker, and Axe on top of that. Once he gets the Blink Dagger, he can control some fools, though. Always needs to be a little careful against Tiny. I think the Berserker's called Blade Mail, a good way to deal with Tiny in general. Give him kind of a taste of his own medicine as he tries to womp you down. But it seems like Vegas Squadron, execution or ease of execution will not be in their favor this game. A lot of skill shots that they've got to land to make this happen. Easier said than done to get that perfect combo in those team fights. Phoenix now the final choice for the Ninjas in Pajamas. Jonas playing up his Phoenix here. I'm liking it. Great mobility. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a bit interesting to see the interaction between Void dishing up that Chronosphere and Phoenix trying to work around it with the Egg. I suppose it could be enough to force Void away because with the elusive movement of this Phoenix, you know, it could prove to be a bit of a, a bit of a squash for Vega if they had, you know, 
the idea of making a good jump in heads up kind of a play. So we'll see if it is a factor here. Let's get things started. This is just game number one of this best of three series, our second series today for the Summit 3 European pre-qualifier. Vega, they're coming into this matchup uh, off a Dota Pit matchup, I believe, against Team Secret. They're actually held their own, let's just say. The, you know, it wasn't going to be a stomp that people were expecting. They did a pretty solid job. NIP, they had a Dota Pit matchup going against Cloud9. They ended up going a tie in the two series, one to one. All right. Well, that's that's exciting for Vegas Squadron. Maybe they can carry some of that momentum here. We'll see. Certainly the underdogs against NIP, but as I mentioned before, names that we recognize. I know R Zeke. I know Tron here on the Faceless Void, or Tapo for those that don't know how to read Cyrillic. Sing. Uh oh, hand scan. He could be in some trouble. He's blocked out and soon to go down. There's your first blood. No one will draw it with a stray last uh, auto attack there from Queen of Pain. Will any more blood be shed here? Doesn't look like it, Dakota. Jonas will be on the retreat, throwing out those fire spirits. Our Zeke with a clarity on. There's another fissure. No Icarus dive. Maybe oh. they can find it. What a block from no one. He'll eat through the trees. But the Queen of Pain secures that second wow. kill and Vega Squadron strike early. Two to nil to get things started. That that was very impressive. Uh, he just had the mindset to jump, get the very nice body block, and it caught Phoenix so off guard. It's like, yeah, you, you should be able to just quickly tango and get out, but you're just like, whoa, what? What happened? And he had to walk back and forth like three times and then realizes he could probably, you know, simply walk on out of there. But very, very good stuff. Vega lead off a very promising start, 2-0. Uh, it was a first blood bonus to your Queen of Pain, your mid lane Queen of Pain, who already has the deal of going against a one-on-two with this Tony Wisp. Vega got a very nice start, and that Tabushi certainly needed, but now already with the early stun, they force her out back away, and now she'll have to start using that regen. Absolutely. So Radiant side, we've got no one on the quant mid. Nine Posh, Pasha will be in the off lane here playing the Axe. That leaves a safe lane try for Vega Squadron. Seema the Slayer will be on the Ancient Apparition. Tron takes the Faceless Void, and that leaves us with our Zeke on the Earthshaker. They'll go on to Jonas again. He's still only level one. No Icarus dive available. And there you go. That's another kill going the way of the Radiant. Seema the Slayer utilizing that chilling touch for a lot of bonus damage. And looks like this time the ice will melt all over the fire to extinguish the flame. Nicely done there, sir. And those ice mittens are just so good. Level one boxing gloves. And you see just <laughs> why right there. And he's just happy to easily be able to zone back. He's level two. Phoenix, you're level one. What are you going to do about it, huh? And it's just like, just that enough of a boost at the start with that first blood and that secondary takedown is just asserted dominance across the map here. So obviously Queen of Pain has the heads up there in the mid. They get another kill bottom on the Phoenix. Let's look at top lane now. So Nine Pash is trying to work with his axe in this off lane get up. He's got four tangos, stout shield, and a little bit of extra armor there to work with with the ring. And... I, I don't think they're going to have a real easy time really zoning him back. He's clearly not able to just come close enough for XP. He can also maybe take a last hit or two. A lot of action in the mid lane here. Seal Kid as well as Era taking huge damage. It looks like, uh, oh, they'll get another kill on the Phoenix while I'm looking at that. So this offlane Phoenix is a disaster for Jonas. But RC rotated over and they almost killed the Tiny Wisp. Both very low. Wisp will yes. get an illusion to fill up the bottle. That's nice. This is a game that's going to that's gonna get you working here, Zyori, on the camera. I can tell. The action's yep. going to be all over the place because at a moment's oh. notice, just like that, mid lane, they could make a quick jump onto Quap. If she's not careful with the quick blink, she'll be dead. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a lot of quick eyes. I'll try to cover one side of the world when you get the other one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll do our best here. So Limp will be on the Venomancer in the safe lane, joined by Handskin on the Rubik. Battle for the Rune continues. Quap gets this bounty to fill up her bottle. Seal Kid blocked out, though. Oh, not completely blocked out. Not long enough on the Fissure. Era on the Tiny, no surprise. And, oh, we've seen Jonas on this Phoenix. And he's at least found level two now. So he's got the Icarus dive. Old Frosty not going to be able to throw those snowballs and secure a kill unless the Phoenix does something really silly by wasting that Icarus dive cooldown. You can just really tell, though, at the start, definitely in the mid and bottom lane, NIP are a bit off the rhythm that they normally like to have. The Swifts has had his hands full, kind of either helping uh, Era try to get a kill on the mid laner or just try to save him, save himself, that there has been no stackage really happening in their jungle. Now is fortunate enough he has an illusion set to work with here and maybe we'll look for the stack. Actually, he nope. didn't at the three minute mark. Just, that's how it. that that's how busy they've been working in this mid lane and keeping eyes in for bottom. And I'm sure everyone's like, I'm losing my lane, I'm having trouble. It's it's throwing them off their rhythm. And uh, well, we'll have to see them if they can bounce back. There is one hero, Dakota, who's not losing his lane, and that's the Venomancer. He's free farming away up in the top. Last hit leader, 20 and 9. Axe already relegated into the jungle. 9 Pasha's got a double stack to work with, and 
already level four. So he's gotten over this first hurdle, has his stout shield, his ring of protection, and now he can actually start farming up on his own in the jungle. Wait for that creep wave to push into the tower so we can leech some more XP. And there you go. Tranquil boots complete. Things looking pretty good for Axe, all things considered. Tiny's farm, though, leaves a bit to be desired. I guess so does the Queen of Pains, for that matter, 9 and 7. But Era only 10 and 6, not really getting that turbo farm Tiny hopes for in that early stage. Who bought him? They want the bird. He'll be forced to Icarus dive away. And yeah, sometimes it can happen where your Tiny Wisp combo isn't really bringing in as much dominant CS or even some early kills that you can go for. I mean, that's the biggest factor. Sometimes you just try to hope to maybe leave the, the Tiny Worm out there with like half-life, a third life, and you think it's going to be an easy grab on mid lane. Then Wisp comes out like a bat out of hell. But that's got happening the other way now. A Fissure to lead in. Eric could be in trouble, but Wisp is able to bottle up and use the overcharge to keep him alive. So very close stuff. Nice save right there, but anyways... What I was uh, pretty both. much getting at, uh, which yeah. I already forgot my thought, and I'm lost now, so... I was going to say, both sides just staying so aggressive, yeah. especially in this mid lane. It's this constant tug of war back and forth to try and secure an edge. I feel like Silky has done a pretty good job. The zero armor was pretty squishy early on to all those right clicks, and then chilling touch, all that good stuff on top of it. Still yet to concede a death in the mid lane is a pretty big victory. And just goes to show... If I can't even concentrate on what I was talking about because action keeps breaking out. I'm sure the teams are also, you know, pretty uh, pretty scrambled in the brains as far as figuring out where things are going to be developing from here. But they're able to step back, heal up. They're going to make the return back to the mid lane. And yeah, Jonas is just forced to be in a very defensive, uh, fetile position and just hope that he can find some bits of XP. But here comes Sima. He's like, ah, 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 get, get, get out of here. Get away from the XP, bird. <laughs> He's just trying his best to shoo him out from the trees. <laughs> Fly on home. <laughs> hilarious zoning potential that they're making it work. And yeah. well, at that oh. same moment, mid lane, they finally get the grab onto the Queen of Pain. No right. quick reaction there, I'm sure, and they get the job done. Yeah, Era finally uh, getting to that point where the combo really hurts. Now Ding's level 5. Hey, may get that next point in the toss. Yeah, for that slightly shorter cooldown. Now he can harass a little more effectively, utilize that mana pool, and they finally strike to get on the board. Now Era gets a little more money in the belly, 700 or 800 gold up, probably just power treads on the way for him. It will still be slow going towards that Agonims. Wisp bottles up the bounty up top and down bottom. Nine Pasha, he'll grab the haste rune here. That's a Chronosphere and an easy kill on the Phoenix. The bird gets put down once more. This Void getting a lot of farm now. Yeah, poor Jonas, 0-4 now, but with that haste rune, Axe is happy to kind of scout things out. Oh, Fissure not going to be able to connect. And with an easy tether, we'll hop it over. But a nice farm lead in for this axe, though. We're I was saying in the draft how this is the guy where if the early laning phase doesn't go really your way, you're able to really make the comeback play there with the Blink Dagger. And he's got pretty good timing on it. He's been working with a couple of double stacks. He did forfeit that top lane, but he got what he wanted out of it. And now he's just going to jungle his way into that mobility. Yeah, so Venomancer. Ooh, that hand of Midas. Nice and early here. Not the earliest timing we've ever seen, but this is going to be hard for Vegas Squadron to deal with. This is that NIP pocket strat. They love to do this Midas right into Ag's Blink and then into the Veil. And once Venno gets that trio of core items, he just becomes such a threat to deal with at any turn. Outside the Roche Pit, any area where you're grouped up is five. If he catches three, four, I mean, of course, five heroes with the ultimate, the damage output is just insane. Not even a pipe's going to save you from that madness. Yeah, so we'll have to see if they're going to be forced to double back into that kind of extra defensive precaution and itemize that way. But Jonas, the sad bird, now heads back to the jungle, maybe goes on stacking duty or something, needs to find something for himself, and it looks like it will be some jungling. He's uh, only level here. 3, Dakota. He's the offlaner. He is tied for the lowest in the game with the Earthshaker, who's playing that Sacrificial Lamb. Actually even finds his level 4 as he tries to defend that top tier 1 tower. It will go down. NIP get a nice little gold boost for themselves. But this Phoenix is absolutely broke. I gotta say, though, he will be able to hopefully find a period to shine. Once he does manage to get his level 6, if you really look at Vega Squad, you know, they don't have the most quick right click. Yeah, they have Void, but he could be busy elsewhere working inside his own Chrono and mm -hmm. not maybe bashing on an egg. Uh, and if that's the case, they're going to be eating a lot of unnecessary damage. So we'll have to see if that's something that does work to the benefit of NIP. But meanwhile, they're adding some good pressure here mid lane. Bring the tower to about third life. A next go like that, and they'll be able to get the objective done. Yeah, there it is, Eric. Tossing forward. No one grabs himself a double damage rune on the Quap. 
Well, soon to be level 7. Quap's doing okay in this mid lane. What's the CS now? 25-12 versus the 33-10 and 10 Tiny. Here we go. The initiation on to no one. It's weird to say that name. Yeah, it certainly is. <laughs> when you said the first time, I'm like, who? What? No yeah. one's playing Quap, but there's got to be someone. Uh, <laughs> Who's uh, on first? Yeah, exactly. I was just... Get, get out of my head, man. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Oh, boy. So Tron rotating around now. He's level 8, has his Mask of Madness. This is a great time for the Void to strike. Huge damage, almost a maxed out time lock, and just the DPS from the Mask of Madness power treads alone gives him a lot of potential. They're going to bump into Era. No oh, points in that craggy exterior. A great time to try and kill the tiny no one. Maybe thinking about a blink forward. Can they catch him? Mask of Madness on, but oh, the Avalanche from Era. Still a Chrono comes out, though. Tron with plenty of time left on the Mask of Madness. Does he have the damage with the Sonic Wave and the Fissure? They certainly do, but now the Cavalry's here for NIP. They'll try to find some recovery kills. Tron TP's out straight away. No one telekinesed back, but now blinks to safety. I think Vegas Squadron will actually get away with this. Just a one for nil. Tiny dies. That was a good grab on the Tiny. They had a, enough to make sure they could lock him down, but man, that quick stun... Such a nice little defensive maneuver there from uh, Era. It almost worked out to his benefit, but just so much follow-up there for Vega. They knew they wanted to get that Tiny down, and they're bloodthirsty for it, and it pays off. Era now back to his mid lane. Thought about charging forward, but Queen of Pink quickly goes on the retreat. Yes, sir, Era. Only level 6. Now looking for his Drums of Endurance. They'll be around the corner pretty soon. Then the quest for the Aghanim Scepter begins. Tron goes back to the safe lane to keep farming, but Venno has just been so quiet this game. Limp just sitting back, soaking up the farm. That Midas paying some dividends here. We'll see what he moves into uh, item-wise. I think it'll just be that Aghanim's first, but he's number one on net worth by a pretty good bump at the 10-minute mark. Certainly is. Queen of Pain now back, getting bullied away from this lane quite a bit. They want to finish what they started. Remember, with that toss, it's pretty much a secured and easy tower takedown. Just a few punches, that toss... Uh, which he does not get right there, unfortunately. <laughs> but Ice Blast Fissure connects on both. Whoa. Oh, man. It could be bad if they show up. They force up. a shatter. Goes out the preemptive stun. It's not going to connect with just a bit of security, and they play it safe. They go back to the fountain. Okay. Ten seconds. Looks like the debuff has already expired. Will they come back to fight, or will it just be the Wisp is really the question. Looks like they are ready to take a fight. Limp slithering his way down. Has an ultimate at the ready. Brings the tiny back. NIP will hold their tier 1 tower and push back Vegas Squadron. Now in the bottom lane, TP down from no one on the Quap. They'll go in onto Jonas. Icarus dive away, and I think he's okay. The dagger, will it be enough damage? No one coming in, and they'll find the kill before the TP can go through. Even an Ice Blast flying in for good measure. 7-1 to one as the Phoenix dies for the fifth time this match. Oh, man. Era Wisp tried to show up, but they're a little late. And now... They are going to be heading their way out, or are they? Era's waiting. Oh, no! Nice quick reaction there. Nightpatch able to sidestep the stun, but here is going to be the return. Seal Kid shows up. Oh, the scream. It's now going to blast Sonic Wave he right misses through, it. but he's kept alive the Wisp on nice, secure defensive duty. But unfortunately, Era still gets dropped. Now Seal Kid on the low ground, able to kind of get moved away, and all the meanwhile, your Faceless Void able to get this kill on top lane, taking out the Venomancer. Yeah, looks like the Poison Nova hit him, but they'll both be able to make it back to the well in plenty of time to regen up our Zeke with plenty of hit points to spare. So 9-1 to one now. NIP getting picked apart by Vega Squadron. It seemed kind of even early on, but looking at that gold graph as well as the experience graph, it's Vega Squadron coming out. Oh, so much ahead. I feel like this farming Venno is really what's keeping NIP in the game in terms of numbers in their team farm, but he still isn't really online and ready to fight. Does have that point booster, though, is... He does look at the eggs. And it's a weird thing if you think about it like that. He's not quite ready to fight. When he was handed a free lane, Nine Patch sacrificed that lane, but he is ready to fight. He went to the jungle, now he has his blink dagger, and he's looking he's looking for some fights here. And and with that, you keep keeping this NIP squad down. You don't allow them to make that comeback ever since the very rocky start for him. And uh Vega, this is their time to shine, man. They're not looking to take this game very long. They want to make sure they get the job done because, you know, Faceless Void can hit pretty hard, but there's only so much they can do on the outside of a Chronosphere. Yeah, they have Queen of Pain with their new, like, extra special yeah. damage ultimate, but outside of that, later and later into the game, it doesn't really matter. Oh, completely agreed. NIP have that late game advantage. Both Venno and Tiny with this turbo farming can get huge. Relocate towards the top lane. They're going to go on to Tron. There's a combo from Tiny. Secures the kill. And it will be Era that gets the dominating streak. Nice 100 or 400 gold bounty going his way. Good relocate gank. We'll get NIP a little more money to their names. 
Nicely set up there, Hanskin, who had stolen the Fissure. It's just like one of the best things to have when you're a Rubik with the Instacast. And mm -hmm. because of that, they have the long range initiation and they have enough lockdown to allow that relocate kind of a setup. And with that bounty swing, NIP slowly crawl tooth and nail to get themselves back into a successful or at least on par mid game after the struggling start. So yeah. now going back, looking to itemize. You see a very uh, hustled together squad of Vega as they move through their jungle, but I assure you they are also ready to kind of bring the pain once Faceless Void's back. Definitely. No one on the co-op, still not showing signs of much item progression, just a null tally and some uh, power treads. 1,300 gold, thinking about his next investment. Orchid always tempting, but at this timing, 14 minutes, no core pieces. Probably doesn't want to look for that right now. Just has a TP ferried out on the courier. Really curious where he'll, uh, he'll he'll take his item trajectory. See me the Slayer, though. He goes hand to Midas on the Ancient Apparition, so he'll start to turbo farm a bit. And look at that Aghanim Scepter with Void. Probably a Maelstrom in his near future with that Mithril Hammer. Maybe a BKB, but I think Tron wants to go damage, given that he was the he is the position one. Yeah, for the first support to get a catch up Midas back on the uh, AA and at this time is, is very good. It's a hero I've been trying out a lot, and you got to remember he's got to be pretty selfless in the early laning phase, handing over all the CS to his core, and then he could start finding something for himself, and Midas certainly accelerates it quite a bit, but even to get that, you know, 2k plus at that point, and at this time is, is very, very good. So he's going to get levels now very fast. Axe and misses his Berserker's call as they go on to Hanskin. He's shown off that Blink Dagger. Ice Blast flying through. Connects on three. No one's there with the ultimate. The Scream brings down the Rubik, but he gets comboed down again. Nine Pasha misses the Berserker's call. Can they punish it? Nope. Era almost gets dunked, but the regen messing up that threshold. Nine Pasha gets turned around on. It's a double kill for Era. Oh, a no. dunk from our Zeke on absolutely nothing. Tron comes in, <laughs> catches li <laughs> Limp, but <laughs> take over, Dakota. And then Faceless Void's going to get dropped on the return. This is a disaster right now for Vega. That could have been a huge stomp from them, but it didn't work out. We'll go more into that, but it's still Era and Seal Kid on the chase here. They are finally able to get a hold of them, and that just went completely 180. At the start there, it was a beautiful Ice Blast to lead things in, and it landed perfectly on all three. Uh, hold on a second. They do get an Ice Blast, but by this point, they've already healed up enough. Seal Kit should be fine. But anyways, yeah. the Ice Blast was there, and then the Scream came out from Queen of Pain. It connected also, but Ice Axe was not there. He wasn't ready to jump in. It just came too late. If he was able to be yeah. there to catch all three, it would have oh. been just dunk, dunk, dunk. Hanskin? He's going to die. I think he would have died to the dot, but looking for a deny at Roche. Yeah, it was really unfortunate for the Axe. The, uh, the fight started by him trying to initiate. Onto the Rubik. He missed the Berserker's call, just fell a little bit too short. So I was waiting for the Blink cooldown to come back, wait for the Berserker's call. He tried to reinitiate again, missed it a second time in a row, and then that's when the fight just imploded. Faceless Void hops in. I got too excited, started choking on my on myself, and then well, it just got worse from there. So six to twelve. It still looks like a nice lead for Vegas Squadron, but NIP actually have the gold advantage right now. They've been farming a little more efficiently, and now that they're picking up hero kills. Things are looking a little better, and Jonas, he's hit level 6. That's his first milestone. At least he has a supernova now with a reset tool. And he's trying to get a Midas. He's trying to get a pretty late catch-up kind of a Midas, it looks like, uh, having that glove after already picking up the Tranquil. So he's hopefully still trying to find a, a bit of farm in just a, a side lane, but it's not going to be the case for now. It looks like Vega have eyes on going for this bottom tier 1 tower. Leading in the front is no one. That's the Queen of Pain. Not that there's no one there. I'm not going to get used to that. <laughs> well, she throws out the early scream, trying to just quickly eliminate these creeps. They are not looking to walk away from this until they get the bounty. But is there going to be a setup and a defense from NIP with Jonas already on hand and now has the egg? This could be a good team fight. Plus relocate and tiny. Here's the first TP. Let's see if we get it. All right, it's Limp that's on his way in. No Aghanims yet, but does have an ultimate at the ready. Here comes Jonas, swooping on through the Icarus dive. Won't go into the egg yet. Limp the only one hit by the Ice Blast. Tron on his way in. There's the Poison Nova. He's got a Chrono, but does he use it? Connects on two, and that'll set up for the Sonic Wave, which also connects on two. Fast two for nil trade, but now the Poison ticking him low. Stolen Chrono. Meanwhile, Relocator wow. on the backside. They've picked up quite a few kills, and, well, I whiffed that one. Sorry about that. Still a two for three, though. It's NIP that come out ahead. Very, very crazy. I mean, we're expecting the fight to break on out. It looked like a nice heads-up start there. Faceless Void connected, pumped once with the Chrono, eventually did catch the both of them, and just like that, Queen of Pain was able to strike also connecting with both. But what a quick turnaround it was with the relocate coming in. Hold on. Oh, bottom lane, there's going to be the stun from Hanskin. <laughs> 
He's putting so much mileage in this fissure he's taking. He's doing a beautiful job setting things up for his team. But yeah, they, they get a nice turnaround with the relocate and the stolen Chrono locked the two in the place and he's able to clean them up. So what looked like another promising start for Vega just gets flipped once more in yeah. favor for NIP. I feel like they needed to use that Chrono a lot earlier. If he had caught the Venomancer, locked him down, and stopped him from using his ultimate, that's a big victory. But if the Venom gets his ultimate off, he kind of doesn't care about dying at that point. He's already done everything he has to in that team fight. Now the Glyph comes out to save this Tier 1 tower. Some TP's in from No One and Nine Pasha. Can he get a blink call? This time he will. Era stuck duking it out with the axe under the tower, but Wisp is there with a relocate out. They get the last hit on the tower, and the Tiny lives. Now Handskin initiated on. He will be slow, left behind and does get brought down. Now the Wisp, well, he's probably going to die as well. Seal Kid comes to his death, caught inside of a Berserker's Call, and even an Ice Blast for good measure to make sure he dies. Well, that's a lot of hate, but they get the job done there. Wisp will go down at the uh, sacrifice of making sure Eric can live on, and he's moving on right now mid lane. He is picked up a tree and he's using it to beat the shit out of this tier 2 tower. Should be no problem as they'll quickly wipe out the wave and continue to bang it on home. No one's there to contest. Finally the first TP will come in but look where the tower is now. That is a tower at about a quarter, third yeah. barely alive. One that's, simple that's toss a good trade. it's done for. Yeah, it's a really good trade. They also got that tier 1 tower bottom so kind of a, a one tower in exchange for one and a half. They also forced out a glyph on a tier 2 tower. So that's a glyph that's going to be down to the next four or five minutes, four and a half minutes, as all the tier ones have been taken out. Jonas on the Phoenix, on his road to recovery, still 0-6-1, and one, but does have the Glows of Haste, looking for that recovery hand of Midas. Phoenix, one of those heroes that doesn't need items as much as he just needs experience. So now getting some me time in the jungle. This is definitely recoverable for him, though. He uh -oh. is still How the lowest doing, level in the game. Uh -oh. My name's Era. <laughs> I'm just going to kill you real quick. You know, I saw Era just... hanging out on the high ground there, but didn't think anybody would walk by. So there you go. Easy pick. Yeah. Her shaker's just like, oh, don't mind me, guys. I'm going to go ward, stack. Yeah, that was not happening. It was just a freebie right there for Era. So pretty much NIP well back into this game after what was that, what, first blood, two take, three kills within the first minute in favor of Vega. Yep. Mid game now pulled wide open here uh, for NIP. And this is a team that I, I assume and will have the better late, late game. This is just a lot more pressure now on Vega to make the bounce back. They need Axe to make sure he can be on these like setups, on these jump ins. I'm not seeing this, this dunking machine that I've come to know. Yeah, hasn't really been a great game from the Axe. He's missed a lot of Berserker's calls. He's missed at least two dunks that we've seen on camera where he thought he had the threshold, didn't quite have it. I was thinking to myself, maybe that's that change coming into effect, but the early levels are the same. It's that late end when you get level 2, level 3, where it's been tweaked a little bit. Now he's going to walk right into the danger zone. He gets hit by all the poison. Even if he TPs out here, he might not make it, but Hanskin with the plays. He seals the Berserker's call, interrupts the TP, and Axe goes down. Credit to Hanskin. What a nice play there. That's two times this game he's used a spell to just stop them from making an escape. First time was the Chronosphere there on bottom lane. Now he just takes the call and he's like, no, sorry, I'm still going to, you're not going anywhere. It's not happening. So they get their kill and, you know, no caster curse, unfortunately, for Axe. But bottom lane, Tron making the go on to Wisp here. Oh, Era, the they a support for a support. And now he opens up Chrono in a beautiful Ice Blast going to be set up there. Do they have the manpower to take down Era? Well, they do. They invest a lot for it, but they kill the beast. They needed that sonic wave. There was a pretty good chance he whomped that void down after another auto attack or two. I think that was a smart play from the Clop. They do have to hand over their tier 2 tower in the top lane, so NIP still getting something out of it. And they got the Earthshaker, so not all bad. I think that Wisp could have lived a little bit longer to tether across, but Void got, like, back-to-back -back bashes on him, and the Wisp just couldn't handle it. I gotta say, though, the one thing that Vega have to watch out for is this Venomancer, who has been pretty dedicated to this top lane, has thrown together a really good farm, has the Agnums complete, and now potentially could have a Blink Dagger in a moment's notice, just with a little bit of extra farm. If that's what he decides to go for, it's not. He's gonna go even more Goes right dirty. into the veil. Ugh, that is gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna hurt. Vega yeah. are gonna have a hard time with that. So I'm sure he'll go for the blink after he completes the veil. That is the trio. The trajectory you can switch up a little bit, but uh, the bulk of the items, oh boy, is it potent. And even more pressure on this Void to be a little more aggressive, try to catch the Veno before he can initiate onto you. Double hands of Midas for NIP will start to pay off. Jonas now level 9. He's catching up with his Midas complete. NIP will 5-hero smoke into the Roche Pit. Radiant side 
should have no clue. They've got a ward on the high ground. They actually see the laser from the Phoenix. That's kind of awkward if they look at that stage of the map. It's just an invisible laser coming out of nowhere. Roche falling pretty quickly. They don't have minus armor, but will still go down rather fast. Ice Blast now comes in. That will scout it out. Vega could try to contest this and take a fight off the backside of Roche, but then they'll have to deal with this Aegis Tiny, and they will about face straight away. No reason to fight at that part of the map without the chance of stopping Roche. Yeah, NIP had a nice little spread there. They, they probably had to figure that they had a lot of Venomancer wards down to back them up if they wanted to take an engagement there. Supports were on the outside, so not too many people got hit with the Ice Blast, and then worst comes to worst, you have the Relocate save. So I think NIP feel very comfortable. In fact, they would have welcomed a fight with open arms. Vega just forced to watch from the sidelines. They need to really look to bounce back here. We have a lot of towers still on the map here for Vega to really come together and try to push down. They could certainly use that gold. Yeah, Tiny's really starting to get big now. He's top of the net worth chart by a nice big margin, just shy of 13k. Quap right about to break the 10k mark, but Tiny's closing in on his Assault Karas. So going for the big hard-hitting items here, and uh, well, that's not really hard-hitting, but upping his DPS a lot. He hits hard, getting that attack speed makes him one scary mother, and of course, Sieging Towers becomes that much easier. For Vegas Squadron, they know they don't have the late game advantage against the tiny Veno when the Veno got a start like this. So what's the game plan here? Maybe they're waiting for the BKB on the Faceless Void that is pretty core against the tiny who can still get those craggy procs while stuck in a Chronosphere. Probably looking to wait out this Aegis if possible, but I think sooner rather than later, Vega need to get aggressive, use some smokes, and try and put more pressure on NAP. They started with so much momentum this game, but now coming into the mid game, Seems like they're really letting up the heat and giving NIP a lot of space. Now that Tiny is level 16, it just looks like it's going to be David versus Goliath, comparing this Faceless Void and Tiny. I mean, you just look yeah. at Void, it's like, ha, I'll get you, eh, eh, eh. trying to hit him with like inside a Chronosphere, and Era's like, I'll just sit here and survive. Wisp will be there on the outside, and I'm going to turn around, and I'm just going to decimate you with my big old club. It's, it's going to take some cheeky little tactics, some kiting maneuvers, some extra bits of lockdown. Anything you can to try to reflect that damage back onto Era and just and slay him because he's just going to be a behemoth of a beast. And while you're doing that, you're going to be crippled and handicapped because you got Poison Nova coming out in full force as well. It just feels like this is going to be an, a really, really tough test right now for Vega. Yeah. So three minutes left on the Aegis, two and a half perhaps. They'll get out that tier two tower in the mid lane. Uh, Era squished it up earlier, so just an easy push for them now. Only one outer tower remaining for the Radiant. This tier two down in the bottom. It's looking pretty healthy as Void continues to farm away, closing in on that BKB. NIP nearby in the jungle. Wisp Tiny up top. They do have a relocate available if they want to force a fight here. Handskin and Limp nearby, kind of scouting out the Vegas squadron. They don't have any vision into the lane, but they've got vision on the high ground here. Trying to be patient, hoping someone will spring their trap. Trifecta right here. Jonas's limp handskin. <laughs> I'm going to move back through the jungle, take away that farm from Vega, and really just kind of showing how assertive they can be. This bird was once beaten and badly wounded, but now has clucked his way into a new era. And That's looking the, to engage. The nature of the Phoenix, right? You come back to life on a again. fiery rebirth. Yeah. Rise like the Phoenix. Dumbledore and like and bread. Shit. Like bread, like yeast, limp, whoa, he finds our Zeke, hits him with a venomous gale, in comes Nine Pasha, connects with this one, taunts limp, there's a sonic wave to boot, but limp still gets off his rotation, he'll find a kill on our Zeke, Nine Pasha as well, limp is still alive, now they relocate in, on the other side of the fight, they're going for Tron, Avalanche will not connect, but the toss is there, Tron still finds one kill, BKB Please used to get me. off the ult, and he will survive just barely. That's your 10 second BKB charge used to just make a, an escape. No one in Seal Kid going at it. Seal Kid gets to the high ground. He'll be okay. Earns himself up. No one blinks into the base. No way to interrupt the TP, and he will make it home. They pretty much, uh, Vega did, expended so much for that early little skirmish there. The Queen of Pain, old Act was getting involved. AA Ice Blast. The only thing really was, that wasn't there was the Chrono. And they still couldn't stop Venomancer from getting his ult off. Then by the time even Era shows up, two of them fall. He's like, wait, I want to get a kill. And then he has to turn the corner finally to catch up with Faceless Void. And when you have to use a defensive Chronosphere to get away, that's when you know uh, times are tough right now. So with that, they lose a lot. Those ults are going to be down now. And NIP are just, hey, I'm at the front door knocking away. What are you going to do about it? But the cold feet's going to be there. He does have Aegis, mind you. So if he goes down once, he will be fine. Yeah, but not too much time left on the Aegis. Era backing out. I'm going to look at the timer real quick. Expires in about 20 seconds. 
So Aaron needs to know his limitations here. Full mana, they force out the Glyph. Buyback status, good not great for the Radiant side. Still another 25 seconds on the Chrono and about 45 on the Sonic Wave. They're just trying to heal up Era as much as he, they can. He will have that regen rune in just a second. Uh -huh. I like how they're using the laser on the Wisp as he's tethered to Era, just the double heal right there. Yep. Very, very nice. It's very good. Limp uh -oh. initiated on, gets off the ultimate, connects on Tron, may have clipped the axe. No, he'll be okay. BKB not going to cleanse it, but will mitigate the damage for now. Chronosphere comes out on just a solo era. Seal Kid's nearby, might be able to tether to him just to keep him alive. There's the egg. They can't bring down the tiny. They lose their faceless void. Another Berserker's call from Pasha, but to what avail? No one trying to bring down Limp. He's just too damn tanky. They can't kill this dire side. Now they lose the axe. It's a two for nil at the beginning of this fight. The Quap does TP out, makes it home. Has her ultimate up now, but Void stuck in the grave for 50 seconds. That's unfortunate for Vega. It looked like a pretty good opportunity to make the jump play when they had to save Venomancer. Ooh, air ball, oh. fortunately there for the Sonic Wave. And with that NIP, walk away, beating down the mid lane racks of Vega. But yeah, after the relocate save on the Venomancer, Era at his lonesome. They thought they could make the jump in, but they jump in to trouble as Venomancer still gets off his ultimate now. It's only, you know, it's going to be there every fight. Such a short cooldown. Level 3 with an Agnum Scepter is only one minute, so you have it every engagement, and you have to deal with it every engagement. And then on top of that, the Tiny with his, his right hand. Oh, No one. Needs to be a little careful. Bumps into the Tiny. Era doesn't have enough damage without the, the full combo to bring him down. It showed him who's boss right there. He gives him a few love taps with his branch. All right. Quap up to 3,300 gold after the BKB. Kind of unfortunate for the Quap that she was forced into a BKB first item. Normally a hero you want to be a tempo controller, and here she's just all about the survivability. Has the ultimate orb, so... Hmm. What will that be? Is she gonna go BKB Lincolns? That just feels so defensive. Uh-oh, bird! Boom! See you later! Bye-bye! That's a shatter. Luckily picked up his uh, tranquils he dropped before he died. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise he would have just lost that and... They could yeah. have quickly grabbed a hold of it, but yeah, good snipe right there coming out from your ancient apparition and yeah, gets Vega, you get a small kill That's and a nice. bounty and yeah, Ags, man. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's not level three ult, unfortunately. Uh, he's still got a ways to go before he can get there, but oh, the yeah, duration is just so good. That's a full fight when you're not going to have the sustain, and we just saw what sustain could do. That was tether plus the Phoenix involved. Uh-oh, mid lane. Oh, God, please. Echo, stop him. And, well, there is going to be the sheep. Here comes Queen of Pain showing off her fancy new item. Era is going to get hit from that Agnum's Ice Blast, but there's not enough follow-up damage, or is there... Uh-oh, Void, he jumps too far, he doesn't see that arrow went the other way, and he's not going to catch him. Yeah, he sees the Wisp, but not going to burn a Chrono for just a solo Wisp at this stage in the game. But that's the right call to hold it, but unfortunate that they missed the opportunity. Arrow just clears out a quick stack of Ancients. Easy peasy for him. Okay. NIP still in control of this game, Dakota. Upwards of 12,000 net worth in their favor, 7,500 XP. Still some item progression for Vega Squadron, but the longer this goes on, the less control they have. Veno now moves into a Shiva. It's not getting the blink quite yet, and Tiny gets a full heart of Tarask. Look at this guy, 3,400 HP. They've been having trouble killing him before that. How do they kill him now? Uh, you pray. I mean, I don't even know at this point. He's just so big. You, It's almost at the point where you... I want to say you try to take out the rest of the team behind him and then find a way to kite him or... Uh-oh, bottom lane. Axe. Axe is supposed to be big and bad. He looked like... Let's be honest. He looked like a little bitch right there. He just got thrown up in the air and they just... It was like a wiffle ball thrown up and they just smacked it out of the backyard. It was just a good grab. Axe is now out 45 seconds now. No buyback. Easy tier 2 bottom lane. And with yeah. the Shiva's grab on Limp, the one potential damage output coming out in the form of right click is the Faceless Void. But if you don't get Venomancer with that Chrono, that Shiva's is going to really nerf down that at damage output. And yeah. they're battling through backdoor right here. They're, they're actually winning the it. battle too. That's the funny part. Creep's coming in. Now they'll be able to finish off this tower. Still no Glyph for the Radiant. I think NIP may, might have a go at high ground here. Axe does now have a buyback since they are... Oh no, he just has a buyback. I thought they uh, took out that top tier 2 tower. NIP will just back this train up. Won't get hyper aggressive. They're already one lane of barracks up. They know they've got this late game advantage, so no need to take unnecessary risk at this stage of the game, Dakota. Certainly not. A tournament of this magnitude, I mean, you got to make sure you can take 
nothing for granted. You want to make sure that you just don't allow the throw to be there. We've already seen what can happen. I mean, yesterday we saw a Hellraiser series where it was a game that was in the books for him, taking down one set of racks and that yeah. one, and things just went to disaster. So That's true. And it's a single elimination, man. You drop a game, and next thing you know, you're out. That's very true. BKB on the way for Axe. He's leading the charge with this smoke rotation. It's Vega that move into the Roche pit now. Perhaps they were thinking NIP were hanging out in the pit themselves, hoping to engage, but they'll set a trap and just camp out here. They got to come here eventually, right? You would right? think so. <laughs> As they wait there. They'll be in here soon. No, they won't. Okay, so maybe they consider doing it themselves, but is this something they can do? Oh, man. No, they can't. They're like, I we can't do this. So. I we can't do this. We got to go. I think their play here is trying to intercept in the pit. Like Tron goes yeah. in, catches a three or four hero chrono. They follow up with a sonic wave. That's their play. Going into the Roche pit and letting Tiny initiate on them. Probably not the way they want to go about it. It's all about this Venomancer. They need to lock him down, but I don't know if they have the damage to just kill him straight up. Look at his armor. 12 plus 21 on this Venomancer. 12 plus 21 Venomancer. Tiny's got a heart now, and he's got 6 plus 20. Does get stunned. It will secure it. Goes in. He's like, I'm going to do it. BKB, he goes to bring out the right click. There's going to be the ult from Queen of Pain. Era's taking huge damage. They can't get the relocate. Wisk goes back, but he doesn't get the tether. And now a secondary chrono, which was going to be stolen, still locks Era in place, so he does go down. And Limp, after already dishing out the ultimate, is just gonna try to wither away anyone else who remains. Hands get from Ooh. the high ground on his Rubik, dishing out big right click, and Phoenix shows up, gets the heal off, and they still are gonna be coming out on top of this fight, losing their faceless Void and Axe. Yeah, that was that was cute. <laughs> At the end, there was a telekinesis on the Axe right back into uh, the egg, so he did get clipped by the Phoenix. Jonas got credit for that kill. So that's fun. Jonah's actually looking at an Aghanim Scepter here, Point Booster and Ogre Club, 700 in the bank. That's pretty exciting. Roche sitting at half health and, well, NIP not even going to bother attempting it without their Tiny. Yeah, it just shows that Vega do have potential, uh, and they did a way to make most out of the situation with efficiency. You didn't notice that Faceless Void didn't just jump in and immediately drop the Chrono. He felt comfortable getting as many right clicks in and then using the Chrono when necessary. And it was a bit awkward there for a bit. I don't know if Seal Kid was trying to pull out Era back and away. Uh, it didn't look like back to base. He went somewhere just nearby, hoping to get him out of the chrono. I don't know if maybe Era's BKB was popped, or he didn't time it right, or the tether didn't connect, but it just didn't work out for him. And Era ultimately even got locked down once more from the Rubik Wait, stolen <coughs> chrono. Does Era, ha does Era have a BKB? Oh, you're he, right. He doesn't have a BKB. I was thinking yeah. of the earlier game when we yeah. had a Tiny Wisp, and he did get a BKB. And this one, he okay. did not. So it was a not bit yet, awkward there as far as pulling him out. I guess he just couldn't quite get in range or maybe just didn't give himself enough time to tether over there. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't really focusing on the Wisp that fight. He was kind of out of my periphery. So yeah, we'll see. Roche still under contestment, though. There is a good bit of HP still missing, about a third of it. But both teams kind of lacking on just minus armor in general and the ability to flash push Roche, uh, Roche especially the Vega Squadron. I don't think they can actually kill Roche. All they can do is contest it. They know they don't want to hand yeah. the Aegis over, but they're in this weird pickle where their hands are somewhat tied in the speed at which they can kill the big boy. An IP roll through. D Ward using the Venomous Wards to help him get him on the high ground. So obviously Vega are like, okay, they're there, they're dewarding, they're doing it. AA's got to try to set the stage with an Ice Blast, which is coming from afar. This is a three-pointer, mind you. Will land go. the follow-up as Tron moves in. BKB already popped. He's going to right-click at home, waiting. No, doesn't get the Chrono off to connect them both before they recall. They are able to take down the Venomancer, who was forced to buy back. Top lane. Relocate oh, wow. into oh, the tier three. God, yeah. There's creeps pushing into the mid. No backdoor protection. He'll bring the tiny back with him. Now the fight in the Roche pit breaks out. Tron's waiting for it. Has a chrono, but Lip bought back. Poison Nova's there. They'll bring down Tron. Wisp barely stays alive. And on the other side of the fight, everyone just TPs out. That'll be the end of it. NIP come out big. They secure Roche, bring down the void, and get a tier three tower in the mix. What a trade indeed. Wow, I was just expecting him to send them back to base for that one, but just to have the, the mindset to bring him to the top lane just to get something in the meanwhile over there works out beautifully. They come back, so the chrono that was saved 
I thought it looked like initially he was going to try to dish out the chrono before they were, you know, leaving, but unfortunately he didn't. So when they came back, he had it ready for him, but by that point, Venomancer was already back, got his poison ult off, and it was just a downhill from there. Mid lane, Axe maybe initiated on here. Tiny tethered up, just moves into the base. Not a care in the world with Void dead. He's feeling pretty brave. Void does have a buyback. Only 25 seconds left on his respawn timer. Hex used on Tiny will proc Cold Feet, but now the laser just healing him up as he starts going to work on the creeps and the barracks. Ice Blast will fly in, connects on him. Tiny losing some regen, but he's just so damn big with an Aegis of the Immortal. He has no reservations about throwing it away in exchange for another lane of completed barracks. Cold Feet again will stop him dead in his tracks, but two lanes of barracks down. All of a sudden, Vegas Squadron backs up against the wall here, Dakota, with options limited. It is just game one of this best of three. If Vega are to fall here, they do have a chance to bounce back in game number two to try to take it to a game number three. But NIP, after what was a straggling start, have found their way back into their groove, and they have a beast. Of a and he is just working right now in the last tier three, knocking it home. This is going to be the final defensive hurrah with no more glyph. This is their, this is it before Megas. They got to go. Here we go. Era initiated on. Tron goes in. BKB. They're going to battle it out. They'll turn Era into a little piggy. He comes back. Still throwing out the right clicks. It's a Chrono on Chrono. Stolen by Rubik. The double bubble, if you will. Era may go down next. A huge dunk oh. from RZ. That'll proc the Aegis. Lip manages to get off his ulti before he goes down. There's your Phoenix Egg. But Tiny and Wisp are still alive. They're going for the barracks without a glyph. This will still be Mega's double buyback used by Vegas Squadron. But without the cooldowns, they can't get there in time to stop it. And now it's all but good game. There it is. NNGG says R Zeke with Megas on the field. They won't even try. They'll tap out and move on to game number two. Ooh, that Venn diagram of a play. What was that? Unbelievable. Funny to look at. Impressive to watch. NIP, they, they get the game back and they just do Tony Wisp things. And plus, considering Venomancer with his free roam in the top lane, he also was a huge factor. Just well played overall. Vega, they put together a draft. If it's not able to succeed in that mid lane period, this is when you want to see a Queen of Pain really snowball and just constantly take kills, get easy picks on the Wisp. When your Axe is jumping in, he's just being a bit of a behemoth himself. It, it just unfortunately didn't really come into its own. And NIP were able to just kind of take the game from there. All right. So NIP with the recovery, the much stronger late game on the draft. And even though Vegas started out strong, they just couldn't seal the deal. We'll see what they have in store coming up in game number two. Stick around, folks, because this best of three is just getting started here for the Summit 3 European Phase 1 pre-qualifier.